हाय न्यूट्रिशन इन एनिमल्स द वे प्लांट्स एनिमल्स प्रोक्योर फूड वेरीज प्लांट्स प्रिपेयर देयर ओन फूड इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सनलाइट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द क्लोरोफिल पिगमेंट प्रेजेंट इन द लीव्स plants are green green stands for the chlorophyll pigment there so plants prepare food on their own but animals are not like that animals may be herbivores or carnivores or omnivores animals that depend on plants for their food directly are called as herbivores for example you have the cow the goat the horse they are all herbivores carnivores like the tiger the lion such animals we say they eat other animals as their food but study it with a little bit of interest the food that they procure maybe the lion eats a deer yeah maybe we say lion eats deer it doesn't need any plant food at all but how does the deer live the deer depends on plants for its food if plants are not there deer cannot feed itself deer won't survive then where is the question of food for carnivores carnivores too will die now animals like tiger and lion they are indirectly dependent on plants not directly they may eat animals for their flesh and meat okay but what do those animals eat they eat plants so all carnivores they are indirectly dependent on plants coming to omnivores human being is an omnivore bears are omnivores a crow a bird like crow it is an omnivore it eats everything if it gets nuts and seeds it eats them if it gets worms it eats them too so crow is a it is an omnivore human beings humans mostly humans are omnivores they eat plant products as well as animal flesh this is how the story of nutrition goes on today we will go a little deep into this and see how does nutrition take place in animals okay next we'll go point by point some of these things you have learnt in lower classes maybe you have revised now at the same time we go a little deep into the subject plants prepare their own food animals cannot animals do not have chlorophyll someone asks you why can't animals prepare food on their own they don't have chlorophyll if our head had been green and we had chlorophyll in the cells there maybe we too might have been able to get food prepared with the help of the chlorophyll there but animals are not made like that animals feed on other animals or plants animals depend on plants directly or indirectly directly 
they eat plants they eat plant products indirectly animals eat other animals in turn those animals eat plants three food is required for growth repair and functioning of the body this too we have to just revise growth a baby newly born baby it will be just a few inches but as days pass on the baby grows in 1 2 3 years it is in a position to run play enjoy that growth how did it happen it is the nutritious food you provide the child with child grows up comes to school grows further he becomes an athlete a world class athlete how did it happen it's because of the nutritious food you have provided the child and also exercises that the child does the physical work the child does the child develops a robust body and becomes a world class athlete so growth repair see you have a cut you are in a hurry you get scratched by a blade or something you get worried a bit then you get ointment applied medicine applied if necessary you get the stitches put few days as the wound will disappear the body has repaired itself the tissues have turned active they started multiplying there and the wound you had will get absolutely cured some people who even face major accidents they undergo operation they get the medical treatment required after 3 or 4 months they'll be as healthy as they were earlier so food plays a vital role food treatment exercise and all these play their roles third functioning of the body your teacher gives you a few math sums or the english teacher asks you to write an essay the art teacher asks you to draw an elephant on the drawing sheet here your mind does to function start working plan out find out the answer work out all these are possible only when you are well fed you should have a nutritious diet the brain will be functioning the brain growth takes place and the brain will be able to function well and get you succeed in the various activities you take up you run 100 meters dash you run to the bus stand to catch the next bus you are getting late you play with your friends football all these are various kinds of functioning of the body food plays a major role four animal nutrition is dependent on especially three aspects one is nutrition requirement this requirement of nutrition is not the same for all animals it differs from animal to animal especially these herbivores they take in lot of cellulose they eat grass as they eat grass they get lot of cellulose abundant quantity of food they take in an elephant how much does it eat in a day we human beings we eat very little compared to the quantum of food taken by a cow or an oxen or uh, an elephant herbivores have to take huge quantities of food because cellulose which they digest has very little nutritive value in it if they eat grass as animals eat other food items they will not be able to survive at all they need lot of grass from the grass they have to get the cellulose cellulose has to get digested 
and from that they need get the required nutritive material. That is nutrition requirement. It differs from animal to animal depending on the kind of activities it undertakes. Mood of intake. Again it differs. Each animal is different from the other in the mode of intake. A baby, an infant sucks the milk of the mother. It sucks the milk. A snake, it swallows an egg. It gets an egg off. The chick, a hen, what does it do? It opens its mouth wide, makes enough space for the egg to move in, then takes the egg inside and the egg is swallowed as a whole. Then after going into the stomach, the animal will curl itself, wind up itself around some material and the egg gets broken. The pieces of shell come out. The nutritive material inside, the yolk of the egg, the albumin there, the animal consumes. A cow, how does a cow eat? It eats in a hurry. It goes on eating grass. The chisel like the teeth here in the lower jaw and the hard upper jaw, they meet each other. Grass gets cut into pieces. Teeth are there in the lower jaw. What does it have here in the upper jaw? A palate, a hard palate. When these two meet, the chisel meets the palate, grass is cut. It eats in a hurry because usually these cows used to graze in areas, pastures near forests. At any time, the wild animals may attack a tiger or a lion. Lions usually they come in prides. 8 to 10, 15 lions they charge at a time. And buffaloes and cows too face it. Because they too will be grazing as a herd. 200, 300 cows will be there in one herd. So they have to eat in a hurry. They cut, go on cutting grass into pieces and eat. It goes into the rumen. From the rumen, grass comes out. When the cow is taking rest under a tree, it is, it has leisure time, it brings the cuts, chewing the cud we call, it comes back to the mouth, it goes on chewing the cud and leisurely it will swallow. Two to three hours it goes on, all the 200, 300 cows, they will be taking rest under a tree. No carnivore can attack them. They will be quite powerful, very attentive and they will be on the lookout for any carnivore that may attack. See, you take a squirrel, it starts scrapping food. It gets a fruit, the squirrel will start scrapping the food with the incisors. The long incisors here, it scraps, it cannot bite, it scraps and eats. A mosquito, it sucks the blood from your body. A mosquito. Okay. Starfish, very interesting. I'll show you that picture later. A starfish, when it gets food, a shell, it breaks the shell open. The food comes out now. The soft material inside. What does the starfish do? It inverts its body. Very interesting. Inverts its body. You know what's inverting? It brings its stomach out. Stomach out. The whole body gets inverted. We cannot do it. And it takes the food into the stomach, envelops it, then the body again inverts. Again inverts. It comes back to the original shape. Very interesting. An animal inverting its body, bringing the stomach outside, catching the prey, then again getting inverted and getting back to the old position. Right? 
So that is mood. What is mood? How is it done? How do you take in? How do you take in food? How do you eat? That is mood of intake. You take it inside. Utilization in the body. How is the food taken is utilized by the tissues in the body. That is another phase. Oxygen is taken in from the air we breathe in. That oxygen goes and combines with the glucose. Then energy gets released. A byproduct is carbon dioxide. Glucose acts with oxygen and carbon dioxide is produced along with carbon dioxide energy is released that energy is used by the animal for all its day to day activities that's what happens in our body too ok next food consists of you have learnt in lower classes maybe you know it by heart you can tell the Six items are given here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because I have put two together here. There they have put them separately. Major nutrients of food. One, proteins. Number two, carbohydrates. Three, fats. Four, vitamins and minerals. In some books you find vitamins and minerals taken care of separately under two heads. Water. We cannot exist without water. You have to drink plenty of water. Roughage. The food should be quantified. To quantify the food, you need roughage. In all the different items of food we take in, there is lot of roughage. In most of the western food items, roughage is less. Indian food, roughage is more. Carbohydrates which are complex are broken into simpler substances. We take in food, carbohydrates go in. From the carbohydrates or fats or proteins, complex molecules get broken into simpler molecules. How does it happen? It happens with the help of the secretions of the glands. We have glands in our body. In the mouth we have, in the stomach we have, liver and pancreas, they too secrete. Then intestine is there, there too secretions are there. All these secretions of different glands in the body, they act upon food. They act upon food and get the glucose separated. They are... All chemical activities, chemical activities, glucose gets produced, glucose goes through our blood into different parts of the body. When oxygen goes there, glucose and oxygen act with each other and carbon dioxide and energy is produced. That energy we use for our various day-to-day -day activities. This is what you call as digestion you digest it you utilize it so the juices secreted by different glands acting on the food is called as digestion it happens in our elementary canal or the digestive tract the digestive tract starts with your mouth mouth and it goes throughout the alimentary canal or the digestive tract it ends up at anus Open, beginning part is mouth the closing part is the anus throughout this path digestion takes place digestion takes place only in the large intestine Water is absorbed from that and the waste is converted into semi-solid food to be expelled out of the body. Now different ways of nutrition, I told you bees and hummingbirds, they suck nectar. 
bees and hummingbirds. Infants, they suck the milk of mothers. Snakes, python swallows the animal as a whole. A small animal, say a dog, a dog is about one, one, one foot high. If a python catches it, it winds up its entire body and packs the dog <coughs> and starts swallowing it. The whole body is swallowed as it is. It doesn't bite. And even the teeth in the mouth of the python, they are all inwards. Body can move in easily, but body cannot come out. If an animal struggles to come out of the python's mouth, it's a very difficult task. Why? There are scores and scores of teeth, row after row, they are all pointed inwards. The more you try to come out, the more you struggle to come out, you get hurt more. Everywhere there will be pain. Everywhere you get hurt. But you get pushed inside very easily. So for an animal to move in, it's easy. To come out, it's very difficult. Then it enters the stomach. And in the stomach, the animal is digested. And the nutritive aspects are absorbed into the blood of the animal, snake. And whatever remnants are there, undigested food that is thrown out of the mouth. It doesn't go all along the alimentary canal as in the case of human beings. The animal will just spit them out through the mouth. Snakes, okay. Aquatic animals. A lot of aquatic animals, mainly fish. How do fish take in food? They have a filtering system in their mouth. As they take in food, the food particles are filtered. They filter tiny food particles. Only tiny particles go in. What's not required is prevented from going in. They just take in water. Through the water, tiny particles come in. And it filters them. Tiny particles go in. The rest of the water, everything is just pushed out backwards. And these tiny particles are digested. It again, it differs as far as the larger fish are concerned. Various modes of feeding. Even they are fed differently. Mothers feeding their young ones. Mothers taking care of the young ones. There too, you find lot of difference from animal to animal. The birds, how do they feed their young ones? A cow, how does it feed its calf? Human beings. An elephant, how does it look after its calf? Very interesting. There is vividity, there is variety. Okay, next. Now we will come to digestion in human beings. The course of food in the human body. The course. You say BSc course, BA course, graduation course. How does it go on? So course. Digestion in human being, it starts with the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity. What is the buccal cavity? Open your mouth. Whatever you see there, that cavity and all the other organization, what you find there, it's all together, you call it as buccal cavity. Mouth. The space inside the mouth. You have the tongue there. You have the teeth there. And you have an inlet. And from there it moves to the esophagus. When the mouth is closed and partly chewed food, it's pushed inside, it goes into the esophagus. You call it as food pipe. Food pipe. So here is the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity. And around the buccal cavity, you have the salivary glands. See, salivary glands are here, here, 
in this part you have the salivary glands. The moment you look at any favorite food, your favorite food, your mouth starts salivating. It thinks, oh, this man is, this person is going to take in food now. Let me prepare myself. You see a laddu. The moment you see laddu, salivary glands are ready. They begin secreting. If a friend doesn't give you that laddu, even then you salivate and you swallow it. You can see it here. So salivation. Salivary glands are here. You see here? Salivary glands. This is buccal cavity. Buccal cavity leads in you into the esophagus. This is called as the food pipe. Food pipe is an ordinary word, common word. But scientifically, if you want to say, call it as esophagus. Esophagus. This is the food pipe. Then you have the stomach here. Stomach. It's almost a J-shaped, see? English J, J-shape. Stomach. From stomach, the food moves into the duodenum. Duodenum. From the duodenum, it moves into the small intestine. This is the small intestine. It's the longest part of our digestive system. It's all coiled. It's all coiled. If you just open it out, extend it, the length may be around 25 feet. 25 feet. You may be around 5 feet. 5 times that, your length, your height. It's the longest part of our digestive system. Then from there, it gets into the large intestine. See? This is the large intestine. This is the ascending part. This is the transverse part. This is the descending large intestine. It has three parts. Ascending, transverse, descending. Then comes the rectum. Rectum here. Where the waste in the food gets collected. Here. Rectum. And then when the pressure gets built up there, you feel like visiting the toilet and you pass stools. And the end part of the system here is called as anus. It is a ring like structure. Always it keeps itself closed. Only when you pass stools, it just expands because of the pressure from within. Otherwise, it will always be in a closely restricted position. It doesn't allow the stools to pass out as, as it is. No. The person should decide. You have to send the message from your brain to your rectum and anus part. Then the pressure gets built up. So, buccal cavity, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum and then anus. Now, this is the course of the digestive system from mouth to anus. See here, buccal cavity, esophagus, stomach, Small intestine, large intestine is about 5 feet. Here. The stomach is here. Lower part. Rectum. Anus. Okay, next. This you, what I said now, we have streamlined it. It is called as elementary canal or digestive canal. Digestive tract. Elementary canal or digestive tract, salivary glands, I told you, they are here. Above the upper jaw, lower jaw, they are in pairs here. The salivary glands play an important role. Digestion of food starts in the mouth. Remember, don't swallow your food. 
Don't be in a hurry when you take in food. Every gulp of food you place in your mouth, you have to chew it. You have to chew it. You have the teeth. You have the tongue. The tongue pushes the food, overturns it. It helps you like a spoon, mega spoon. Then the teeth are there. They crush food. So food has to be chewed well when it is in the mouth. If you don't chew food, if you start swallowing food, then your food has missed one important part of digestion activity. Digestion in the mouth is zero. No digestion takes place. Certain aspects of food get digested and the activity starts in the mouth itself. A small example. Take parched rice. What's parched rice? Avalakki. Avalakki, parched rice. Take one spoon, put it in the mouth. Do you find any taste? Raw parched rice. You should not have added anything to that. You don't find any taste. Go on chewing it. Don't swallow. Go on chewing it. After about a minute, you feel the parched rice to be very tasty. You feel like chewing and chewing again and again. What's happened? Salivary juice and has come fallen. It has made the parched rice wet. The teeth have ground it. The starch in the parched rice, it undergoes digestion now. The salivary juice starts digesting it. The starch starts getting turned into sugar. Starch in the parched rice turns into glucose. Now you find the parched rice to be tasty. In case you had swallowed parched rice, what would have happened? This activity would not have taken place at all. This kind of eating or swallowing is not worth it. Not worth it. So you should allow the salivary glands to act and digest the food. Next to salivary glands, you have liver. In the previous diagram, Get back. You have the liver here. It's a brownish red organ. You say brownish red or reddish brown. Reddish brown organ with a small sac here at the center. Here you have see. Gall bladder. The liver secretes bile juice. The liver secretes bile juice. That bile juice is kept stored in the gallbladder and as the food comes to the food pipe gets digested in the stomach and starts moving further the bile juice comes and falls on the food it starts getting mixed with the food here you have another organ it is called as pancreas here see light green yellowish green it is pancreas Pancreas secretes pancreatic juice. Bile juice from the liver, pancreatic juice from the pancreas. They come together, they get mixed up and they get poured into the alimentary canal where the food is moving on. It gets mixed up. Here. Then you have pancreas secrete digestive juices. Again, you have intestinal juice. We will speak about it later. Now we move ahead. Ingestion, the process of eating food into the body. You take food inside, no? You take food. You eat food. It is called as ingestion. But it doesn't stop there. It has to go into cells, no? Tissues. 
that happens in the small intestine. Here, though it enters the digestive canal, it is still outside the body in a way. In the intestine, the digested food as it goes to the intestine, in the intestine, ingestion, taking the food into the body starts. How does it happen? Previous. See here I told you, small intestine is all bundled up. About 5 meters of small intestine or 25 feet long small intestine is all coiled up. Inside this small intestine, you have a long tract, 25 feet tract, through which the food has to pass through the longest part of the tract. Here, again certain juices act on, but the ingestion too would have started. Nutritive aspects in the food have to be drawn into the blood. To increase the area of this activity, the small intestine will have lot of finger-like projections like this. It's not a smooth canal. Intestine, small intestine is not a long simple tube. How is it? From the walls of the intestine, you have a number of finger-like projections like this. If you cut open the intestine, you come to know. Lots of finger-like projections, small projections from the interior of the wall, moving in like this. Food has to move through that. It has to make way and go. What happens with that? The area through which food gets ingested into the blood, that increases. That area increases. Every bit of nutritive aspect in the food, digested food, is drawn into the blood. Blood vessels are there. A network is there in these finger-like projections. They are all blocking the food from moving further easily. They have to pass through. And these finger-like projections are called as will lie. Will lie. These will lie help in ingesting the food or taking in the nutritive aspects in the food into the blood. The process of eating food into the body. It's a white term. Even the mouth too, a little bit of injection takes place. In the stomach too it takes place. But much of the injection takes place in the small intestine. Small intestine plays a major role 